Now that we spent a few days talking about the domain and range of functions, which again is where the graph shows up on the x and y axis, the domain and the range, we're going to start talking about functions in a different way. We're going to use now a new notation when we're talking about functions called function notation. So if you look at the top here, this is a function written how you're probably used to seeing it, where there's x's and y's and they create x and y coordinates. With function notation, we now have this line. The only thing that's different between function notation and regular notation is the fact that instead of writing y's, we're going to write this symbol f of x for both the function and the ordered pair. Function notation, f of x. Now when we talk about the phrase f of x, here's what we're really saying. These are essentially interchangeable. Still always the y or what f of x is equal to is going to be my output. So y is still my output. And just like before, x is still my input. But now when we're going to be dealing with multiple functions at the same time, we're going to have to give each function a name. So the f part right here in f of x is going to be the name of our function. There might be a different letter there. It's not always going to be f, but that lets us know which function we're talking about. It might be f of x or g of x or h of x, but that way we know which function we're dealing with. This is really just a fancy way to talk about the outputs. f of x is your outputs. So here's Pooh Bear helping us remember that f of x is really just a fancy version of y, just like the Pooh Bear meme here. And just so we remember that this is pronounced f of x. This is not f times x. This is not f parentheses x. This is called f of x. f of x. So let's see function notation in use. Okay, the reason that we use function notation is because it allows us to talk about multiple functions at the same time since we've given them names. For example, here we have g of x equal to 4x plus 2. That's my first function. Its name is g. Its inputs are x's. My second function is called h of x. The function is named f and it has inputs of x's, which is why you see x's in the formula. So what we're going to need to be doing with these functions is evaluating and expressing them in different ways. For example, if I first wanted to, instead of saying f of x have, or sorry, g of x, have g of heart, since that heart that I just put in the parentheses takes the place of this x right there, a heart is still going to replace every single x inside the function. So instead of g of x equals 4x plus 2, g of heart is going to be 4 heart plus 2. With h of, let's say, mm, star, instead of h of x, this line says h of star, so instead of x's in the h formula in that function, I'm going to put a star. This is going to be star minus 5. Let's say we want g of smiley face. Well, since that is what is inside the function, inside the parentheses, that's what I'm going to put inside the function instead of x. This is going to be 4 smiley face plus 2. Whatever is inside those parentheses is what, what get replaced to every x inside the function. Let's say I have h of capital Q for Miss Quigley. Well, then h is going to be Q minus 5. For h of q, you have q minus 5. No matter what is in that parentheses, that's what you replace in the function itself. The cool part about this is, though, let's say I have g of 3, a number. When I replace that, it's going to be 4 parentheses 3 plus 2, since that 3 is now in the spot of every x I had there a second ago. Well, now all I have is numbers left here. When I just have numbers left with no more variables or weird shapes and symbols, I can actually evaluate this function or calculate the function. I'm going to use PEMDAS and I'm going to figure out what this actually equals. Using PEMDAS, I know 4 times 3 is 12, and then 12 plus 2 is 14. So I know 
that g of 3 is 14. I have actually just done an evaluating functions problem. When I'm asking you to evaluate functions, all I'm asking you to do is take the number from inside the parentheses and plug in the number. You're going to make sure you follow PEMDAS rules after you plug it in to actually find out what it is calculated to. Because remember, we want to have g of x equals some number y so that we can write a function x comma y or x comma g of x. We want to plug in the number to get a number out. Inputs and outputs. That's called evaluating a function. Plug in the number and calculate. So let's see a few examples of evaluating functions. These instructions down here say to evaluate the functions and write your answer as an ordered pair. So let's make sure that we remember that when we write an ordered pair, we're going to write it as x comma y or, since we're using function notation, x comma f of x. Still inputs and outputs depending on the way that you're writing your functions. Here's number one. It says given f of x equal to x plus 5, what is the value of f of 2? Since there's now a 2 inside this parentheses, that's what I want to put for every x in the function. So f of 2, I'm replacing all the x's with a 2, this is going to be 2 plus 5. Well, 2 plus 5 is 7. So that means that the ordered pair that represents f of 2 is an input of 2 and an output of 7. There's the ordered pair that represents f of 2. I still have an input and an output, input, calculations, output. Let's try the second one. The second one says evaluate f of x equal to negative 4x plus 7 when x equals 2. Well, this one right here is telling me what x is equal to. So every single x should be changed to the number 2. I'm actually trying to figure out f of 2 here as well. So anywhere I saw an x, I'm going to put a 2. But I want you to tell me what's wrong with how I just wrote this line. I put a 2 where the x is, but something is really wrong. What did I forget? Yeah, hopefully you notice that now this looks like negative 42 instead of negative 4 times 2 like it's supposed to. So it's important to remember that you need to include parentheses around the number that you're plugging in. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, plus 7 is negative 1. And you're, if you're like, whoa, Miss Quigley, where did you get those numbers from? Once you plug it in, all you have to do is throw this part into a Desmos calculator, and it will output the negative 1 for you, so that you know that when the input is 2, the, the output is negative 1. All we're doing is calculating or evaluating these functions. Number three says, given f of x equal 1 half x squared plus 2x, what is the value of f of negative 3? All right, this is telling me to plug in a negative 3 for every x in the function. Let's do it. f of negative 3 equal to 1 half negative 3 squared. I've just replaced the x, but check it out. There's a whole other x in this formula, so i got to replace it again doesn't matter how many times x shows up in your formula, every single time you replace it with that evaluation number. Again, we're going to throw this into our brain or into our calculator. And once we follow PEMDAS rules and calculate this, we're going to get negative 3 halves or negative 1.5. But y'all know I like fractions. So the coordinate here has an input of negative 3 and an output of negative 3 halves. That's the coordinate that is represented by f of negative 3. Input of negative 3, output of negative 3 halves. Now number 4 has h of t, we changed our letter here, equal to negative 2t squared minus 7t. But it asks us to evaluate that when t is equal to 2. So what number am I going to plug in for every t in this function? Yeah, a 2 h of 2 is equal to negative 2 parentheses 2 squared minus 7 times 2. 
I've replaced every single t from the original function with the number 2 because that's what we're given for t. h of 2, when we evaluate that out, we're going to throw that into our brain or into our calculator and follow PEMDAS rules to get an output, and that output is going to be negative 22. So our coordinate here has an input of 2 and an output of negative 22. Cool. Now the reason that we use, again, the function notation is especially helpful when we have multiple functions floating around on our paper at the same time. This becomes in handy when we're dealing with real world, world situations and we have different functions for different things. So for example, we have these following functions and we want to evaluate them. They're going to give them all to us at the same time. We have a function named j, we have a function named k, and a function named b. The function named j has an input of x, the function named k has inputs of t's, and the function named b has inputs of n. That's what we know. We want to evaluate different things. Number 5 is asking for us to evaluate j of negative 4. So we need to make sure that we're picking the j function and we're plugging in a negative 4 for all the x's. So j of negative 4 will look like this. j of negative 4 equal to 1 half x, but instead of x, I'm putting the negative 4. Well, half times negative 4, or 1 half of negative 4, is going to be negative 2, and that's how it is evaluated. These particular uh, questions did not ask us to write it in an ordered pair, so we just need to know what it evaluates to, which is the output. If it asked for the ordered pair, we would say negative 4, comma, negative 2. Number six asks for a b of zero, which means we're picking the b function and we're plugging in a zero for every n. Check it out. So b of zero is going to be equal to zero minus one, and zero minus one, that's negative one. So b of zero is negative one, which is the ordered pair zero comma negative one. Let's try number seven together, k of negative three. So we're picking the k function and we're plugging in a negative three for every t that's in that function. k of negative three is gonna be equal to five times negative three plus three. Five times negative three is negative 15. Negative 15 plus three is negative 12. Remember that if you just from this point want to throw that into a calculator, it will give you the output of negative 12. Now number eight is kind of funky. Which function are we using in number eight? Yeah, it says take the function j and plug in a t. We can do that. Here's function j, but instead of x, I'm gonna put a t in there. So now it reads 1 half t. Since I don't have any numbers to actually calculate here, I'm done. 1 half t is the evaluated version of j of t. I have replaced every x in the j function with the t like it asked me to. Can't do anything more if there's still letters or variables. I can only calculate if there's just numbers, like in numbers 5, 6, and 7. Y'all pause the video for a second. I want you to try number 9, 10, 11, and 12 on your own to see if you can evaluate those functions. Here's my work for these questions. For k of 50, we're plugging a 50 into the function k. It's going to be 5 times 50 plus 3, which is 253. And that's the output, or the evaluated version of this function. b of negative 1 means I'm plugging a negative 1 into the function named b. So here's the function named b, so I'm replacing every n with the number negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, so my output is negative 2. Numbers 11 and 12 have asked you to replace the, the variable in the function and do no evaluations. b of r is saying replace every n in function b with an r, which would just be r minus 1. Exactly what is in the parentheses you plug into the function. So k of e is asking me to plug in an e for every t in that function. Instead of k of t equal 5t plus 3, I have k of e equals 5e plus 3. 
you pick the function based on its name and you plug in something to the function based on what is inside the parentheses. Now these are very useful versions of talking about functions if we're using a real world scenario. So let's pretend we have a YouTuber. Okay, This YouTuber can predict their subscriber count using the equation s of v equal to 0.3v plus 430, where v is the number of views on their new video. Let's highlight some stuff uh, to know what we're talking about here. We do have a function, and we know that the output is the subscriber count, and that the input, or v, is the number of views. So s for subscriber count, v for views. What is the predicted number of subscribers if the YouTuber has 50 or 5,000 new views? They have 5,000 new views. They've given me V an input. So really, I'm not asking for S of V here. I'm asking for S of 5,000. Well, S of 5,000, the subscribers, when you have 5,000 new views, it's going to be 0 0.3 times that 5,000 plus 430. I'm just plugging it in the function. We throw that into our brain or into our calculator, all of that right there, and we're going to get that the new subscriber count should be 1,930 new subscribers. So this YouTuber knows how much their subscriber population is going to grow. Based on a new input, they can get the output of subscribers. Let's say I have these functions f and g, and I want to evaluate f of negative 1, f of 2, g of negative 2, and g of 0. I haven't been showing you how I've been using my calculator, but here I'm going to show you. Let's say for f of x equals negative 3x plus 5, minus 5, wow, sorry. f of negative 1 means I'm just plugging a negative 1 in for every x. And I can do this in Desmos. Once I type in the function with that substituted variable or plugged in variable, it's going to compute that for me. And I know my output is negative 2. Same thing if I plug in that 2, it's going to tell me the output is negative 11. When I start typing fractions, though, if you don't scoot over, the next time you try to type, it's stuck in the denominator. Scoot over to the right to get out from underneath the denominator, and then you can continue typing your negative 2 squared plus 2 parentheses negative 2 minus 5. It works no matter how lengthy that computation is, it will still give you an output of negative 7. We're also going to plug in this 0, so 1 half. Remember to scoot to the right. Then you can type your parentheses 0, close parentheses squared, plus 2, open parentheses, 0, close parentheses, minus 5, and it will give you an output of negative 5. So that's how you can use the Desmos app or website as a calculator to evaluate your functions.